All right, happy Pride, guys. Today is the day, June 1st, 2023. So for this month, I've decided to dedicate a series of videos, a series of content uh, to everyone that identifies as LGBTQIA+, and also allies, and really anyone that's interested in uh, faith and identity. So a lot of you know that I have been going to seminary for the past two years. Uh, I have a year and probably another semester left. But during that time, I've had so many questions uh, from people that identify as LGBTQIA plus on, and, and really heterosexual people. I've, I've had questions from many people on how in the world did I reconcile my faith, have peace with God when it comes to me identifying as a queer individual. So today, I am going to share with you how pride, actual pride, inspired me to go to seminary, all right? So I'll start off with that, and then leading into the month, I'll be going into basically how I process this whole thing, some deconstruction, my experience in seminary, and where I'm at now in my faith when it comes to uh, Christianity. And so it'll be, a, I think that this video is long overdue. However, I believe that it's divine timing because it's been um, where we are in our society and our culture in America right now when it comes to Christianity and um, LGBTQIA plus I, this is, it's, it's, a, it's a hard time. So hopefully I'll be able to share with you my story and journey with you in your process if you are in a place where you're trying to just be at peace with your faith, faith in who you are. So I'll start off with this. Um, in 2016, my girlfriend, who is now my wife, um, wanted to go to Pride. And I hadn't been to a Pride. This is the Pride that takes place in Atlanta in October. I had never been to that type of pride before. And honestly, I was, you see, I got my whole rainbow decked out going on today and I have rainbow on all month. Um, but at the time I just wasn't like, I don't need to do all of that. Like I know who I am and who I want to be with, but I just don't really need to go out there and go to pride. You know, basically I didn't know all that it was. I, I had my assumptions like many people do but I didn't know what it was. And so I decided, Hey, I do want to be with her and I want to go to be with her, you know? Um, so I went and when I got out there, I realized that I was, uh, I'm glad I didn't let allow my assumptions to stop me from going because the experience was absolutely amazing seeing other individuals who also have had the same journey, identify similar to me and knowing that I'm not alone. So seeing that community, seeing love, like I saw, I felt, I experienced the love, experienced acceptance, experienced um, allyship, to see the families of uh, mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters supporting um, individuals in their identity and just allowing them to be authentic in their true selves uh, had all the feels, I had all the feels. And so, um, I saw all of that. I experienced it. I loved it. And while I was out there, um, if you've ever been to an Atlanta pride, probably any pride, uh, you'll know that when you go in, there's normally a group of people there protesting and those group of people identify as Christians. And I will tell you the quotation marks later, but they identify as Christians and they are protesting and they have their bull horns and they have their signs and these signs have scriptures out of context and they have uh, just hate filled. Even they are all around them and their energy is just, it's not nice. It's really not. And I, that's the most conservative way I can say it. it's just not nice. It's very unpleasant and it really just dampens the mood. So um, at the time that I experienced that, uh, seeing that I was enraged, like I was very angry. Um, I just, I don't know. I mean, I could believe it, but I just was really upset that here, these people have not too many places that they can go and feel love and feel accepted and feel community and all these things that we desire as human beings. And here you are at the entrance, uh, trying to make them feel bad about themselves, uh, but justifying it by, uh, your 
perspective and, and uh, scriptural interpretation. So I, I was really upset. And so that kind of passed and I went in, but it didn't pass too long because after we decided to leave the park, I sat in the car and I cried like a baby. I just wept. And all I could think about was I was at a place in my life where I had reconciled my faith. Like I had done the work, I'd had life experiences that pushed me to make or break. I had to do the work for my life to become all that it was and my faith. And so I had come to a place where I was at peace. And I know that if that was me experiencing that maybe four or five years prior to the time, like I would have been devastated. I would have been questioning my relationship with God. I would have been questioning my faith. And I just thought about all the people out there that would be experiencing that. All the people that were already kind of uh, confused and just not at peace with their identity and their faith and seeing that and how it was just going to completely deter them, possibly stir them away from God. And so I was like, you know what? I got to do something because I just know how important it was for me and how hard it was for me to process this and get to where I am in my faith. And so I got to do something. So I went back um, and I, I told my pastor about the experience and I was like, you know, this is what they were saying. And this is not who I believe God to be. This is not who I know God to be. Right. Like I, I had been in church my whole life. Okay. So I had been around theology, ideologies and different, um, perspectives of scripture and, um, faith. And even in the different, um, beliefs that I didn't agree with, I knew, I knew who God was. Like I knew in my heart who God was, that God always loved me and that I always had a relationship. It wasn't built on what everybody else was saying, even though that did, um, influence me later on. But I, at my core foundation, I knew who God was and who God was in relationship to me. So I went to him and I was like, this ain't right. And I have to do something. I think I'm called to ministry. And he says, I think you are too. <laughs> and so I was like, great, what's next? What can we do? How can we go ahead and, you know, help people uh, reconcile their faith? Because that's, I knew what, what I was called to do was to help people reconcile their faith, help them come to peace with who they were and their faith. I'm going to keep saying that because that is what I know I'm called to do in ministry. And that's, so I, um, he tells me, I'm go, you know, you have to go to seminary. And I was like, what is that? I didn't know what seminary was. Um, and he was like, uh, you gotta go to college, you know, you gotta go to college and, you know, Bible theological studies is what you have to do. And I was like, oh my gosh, I already got my bachelor's. I really, you know, I, I really don't want to take any more <laughs> educational classes, but I wanted to do whatever I could do to be in a position to have a voice for someone out there that was looking to, uh, just have representation and know that somebody is going to tell them that God loves them and that they can come to God as they are and build that relationship. Um, if that's what they desire to do. And so I went, I went to seminary. And so, um, what I'll do in these next videos is kind of tell you what I learned in seminary, because mind you, as I went to seminary, now I wasn't, I knew the Bible stories, but I wasn't very theologically sound as in like, I could not, um, debate scripture. I didn't know context. I did not know context. If it wasn't in the Bible, then I didn't know it. Like I did not know historical context. I did not know, uh, the societal norms around these contexts when these scriptures were written, who wrote these scriptures, like all this stuff. I didn't know. I just knew what the Bible said and what my life experiences were of pastors and leaders who, um, proclaim the gospel to me. That's all I had when it comes to that. And I had my own, I had the spirit, right? I had the spirit and the spirit could guide me and help me interpret scripture and what I believed about God and the world and, uh, relationship. So that's what I had going in. I did not know who I was going to become. I did not know if, if, um, I was going to be uh, condemned by scripture. You know, I didn't, even though there shouldn't be any condemnation, I did not know. And so all I can tell you is I came as I was seeking God and 
acting on what I knew I heard, which was a call. That's all I did when I decided to go to seminary. So I'm still at peace with my faith and with God, even in the midst of uh, these different, these alternative perspectives of what Christianity is. Um, and I would go to even say further, uh, not everybody has a different uh, interpretation and perspective based off of experiences and based off of and life experiences, education, so many different things form our faith and our thought about God, okay? So when you hear other people talk about their faith or what their beliefs are, you have to understand that's based about their narrow scope of who they are, who is around them, and who helped form them. So I'm not going to say that um, that's what they believe. There are very, there are different denominations. There are different doctrines, different theologies, different ideologies. There are so many different things. So I'll tell you that I am um, Lutheran. So my wife was Lutheran and that church that we went to for the pastor to help me uh, began my journey to ministry was uh, a Lutheran pastor. The church was welcoming um, to LGBTQIA individuals. And so that is where I was able to stay sustained and, and, and have a community. And so, yeah, so that's it. I'm done rambling, but like I said, stay tuned because each video I'm going to progress into, um, my life because I did a podcast. I was a guest on a podcast a few weeks ago and I realized that a lot of this that I'm giving you today, isn't all of it. There's a lot of context behind it. There's a lot of things that shape me and to make a decision to go to seminary, stay in seminary and do ministry. There's a lot of decisions. There's a lot of life experiences that molded me to come to a place to be able to deconstruct and to be able to reconstruct because you don't just take things out without, you know, making sure that you fill back up. There wasn't an empty space that had didn't, wasn't filled. So, um, there's a lot of context and it's going to take a lot of these videos to get to a place, but for today, well, the, the lesson, the insight that I want to give you today is if you go to Matthew 16, um, and I believe it starts at verse 13, Jesus is asking the disciples who people say that he is. And after he asked them that he asked them, now, who do you say that I am? And then after the disciples respond to who they say he is based off of their own, um, experience, Jesus says, you would not have known this if it wasn't for the father, right? The only way you can know who I am is through God. So I know right now there are a lot of voices out there telling you who Jesus is, who God is, what to believe. But the only way that you truly know is through the gift and through the spirit and through God. So like I said, this is going to be a journey. And I'm not here. I can tell you right now, there's nothing I'm going to say. If you are in conflict with yourself, with your identity, and your faith, there's nothing I'm going to say that is going to help you or, or not help you. It will help you, but it's not going to bring you to peace with that conflict. That is the work that you're going to have to do. You're going to seek God. You're going to have to build a relationship and you're going to have to reflect and learn on yourself and probably go to therapy. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Okay. It is a lot of work. So, but I hope that what I will tell you and say to you, will help you, um, along the process and help you, uh, just know that you're not alone in your journey and you can make it. And you, if you desire to have a relationship with God and you desire to be at peace and right relationship in your faith, you can have that and be who you are. I am confident in that because here I am. All right. And the fruit the fruit is there. Love, kindness, all these things that I've always wanted to be um, and have as characteristics in my personhood. I have that. So happy pride. I hope you celebrate. I hope you wear your rainbows. I hope you have courage. I hope you are brave and I hope you can walk with confidence and knowing who you are and whose you are and that you are loved. All right.